Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a brand new Google Ads campaign type and strategy to help dominate your competition inside of Google. How's it going, everybody? My name is Corbin, and in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through step-by-step -step how to use this new campaign type, all the strategies that you need to know, how to set it up, and some of the, the pros and cons that I see inside of this campaign type, walking you through how it's been working for me. Uh, spoiler, it's been working really well, and that is why I've kind of pushed off uh, creating this video because I wanted to test this out first before I shared it and showed you how to do it um, <laughs> as well because to be honest this campaign type I was very skeptical on if it would work or not and uh, so I wanted to give it time to actually test it out and see how it ran and I, I am happy to report that it's been working really well so I'm excited to show you this video today so if that is something that's interests you stick around let's jump in so the first thing we're going to do is obviously show you and th what we're talking about today is the performance max campaigns um, this was in beta for a very long time but as you can see starting in november around november 2nd it started getting introduced to everybody's different accounts now a performance max campaign essentially is i love this little diagram here let me actually scroll up here first essentially it's combining youtube display search discovery gmail and maps all inside of one campaign and what I like about it is if you scroll up here to this diagram, it actually just uses all these different signals to identify where people are likely to purchase your product or fill out a lead for your service and it, it hits them in the right in the right spots, right? Like using automation and different placements, it does it actually really well, which like I said, I was skeptical about this, but as you see this lady, you know, maybe she's more of a searcher. This one's more of a shopping campaign and then it also hits them with videos and different assets. Now, as we scroll through here, some of the values that are some of the value props you get here, you can increase conversion value. Sounds awesome, right? You can find new customers. Everybody, everybody wants that. You can gain richer insights, um, which is awesome. And then working together all in automation. So all four of these things sound great in practice, um, but actually putting it to the results is what I was curious to do. And I'm happy to report that has been working really well. Let me show you an example of, of how it's been working so far. If we dive into a real account here, you'll notice in this one, so we've been struggling to scale this campaign or scale this account <clears throat> specifically with shopping ads as you can see here we were current or we, uh, you know from january 1st to february 12th we were getting a 1.84 return on uh a return on ad spend and you, those of you that are in the e-commerce world you know that you, typically you need to be at least above a 2 or 2.5 before you're profitable after you factor in returns and um, your overhead and different things like that so we were really struggling to get profitable just using shopping campaigns alone but check out what's ha what happened after we switched over to a performance max campaign. So now we're going to go over to our performance max and you're going to notice it's not running during this time period. We launched this February 24th, I believe was the day or sorry, not yeah, February 24th. And then now check this out. So there's our cost per conversion, but we want the conversion value over cost. We are now at a five row as um, for this. Oh, wait, this only that's only. Uh, for just for this day. Yeah, I was like, I didn't remember it being that high. We're February 24th through the 5th. So today was a good day because we were at a five rows, but we're averaging a 3.42 um, return on ad spend with a conversion rate of seven and a half. And we've been able to scale it a lot more and we continue to, we are continuing to scale it as time goes on as well. So this is just one example of an account that has, has turned around because of this performance max campaign. So I'm going to be walking you through how to set this up, how to set it up so that you can start winning and how you can start increasing either the amount of leads that you're getting or the amount of sales and ultimately being more profitable for your business. So let's jump into the actual settings inside of here. So I'm going to go over to just a dummy account that we have to build this out and show you how to build these performance max campaigns. So the first thing you're going to need to do is obviously set up your Google ads account. If you don't already have one, I'm assuming if you're on this video, you probably are somewhat familiar with it, that, but that what we need to do now is come over to a new campaign. You're going to hit new campaign right here. And then if you are an e-commerce store, if you're looking to drive sales, you're going to click on the sales. If you, uh, performance max, I do want to stop here. Performance max works really well on e-commerce for lead generation companies. It's been hit and miss for me, um, for actually generating leads. I think it mostly comes down to the assets that you're using and the visuals. And that's been the problem, but, uh, just know that it does work for both e-commerce and lead generation companies. So whatever one you're going, you can click here for us. We're going to hit sales. And now this is a really important part for these performance max campaigns. Essentially it's using a lot of the algorithm or the Google's bidding strategies to get you either purchases or phone calls or whatever it may be. I recommend if you're first starting off, 
and you have multiple goals or conversions inside of your Google Ads account to only focus on the one that is the most important for this performance max campaign. So as you can see here, I have this purchase goal set up and then I have these other actions as well. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna click right here and I'm gonna remove these other goals. <clears throat> so it's super important to only have the ones that you want to actually to basically point point the algorithm in the right direction. Like this, these are the actions that I want you to complete. Now, if you aren't familiar with how to set up Google ads um, conversions or how to set those up inside of Google Analytics, you can check out this video right here. I walk you through how to set this up so that you can start running your campaigns and have uh, actually a compass on what's working or not. So don't run any performance max campaigns if you don't already have conversion tracking set up. If you don't know how to do that, then check out that video up above or down below in the description. So for this one, because we're gonna be focusing on sales, we of course want to go um, solely after purchases so we're gonna hit continue here and then as you can see it's going to give us this option for the performance max it has this flashy little new button and that is what we're gonna be clicking after we click that it's going to ask for the campaign name we're just gonna call it we're just gonna keep this as the default and then we're gonna hit continue now I, I will say for those who have their merchant center connected to their Google Ads account it will ask for a pop-up right here there will be another option where you can select your Google merchant center and plug in the, de the information there if you're running uh, a Google shopping campaign or if you're running uh, a connected to your Google Merchant Center. So keep that in mind. Obviously this is just a dummy account so I don't have a Merchant Center attached to it. But if you do attach your Merchant Center, it is gonna pull images um, and things from that as well. So we're gonna hit continue. And if that just confused you, then don't worry about it. It probably isn't something that involves your store. And uh, yeah, you'll just, you can kind of continue on. So then we're gonna set a budget here. I'm going to just set this at you know $10 a day. You could do whatever you'd like. Now I would recommend setting a higher budget. Typically you want it to be two or three X your average cost per acquisition. So say that your cost per acquisition, typically inside of Google was $20. Google recommends that your, uh, your budget be closer to you know, 60, 80, $100 ish for it to have enough room to kind of test and grow. But for this example, we're gonna keep it at $10. And there's gonna be a couple different bidding options here. So the first one is for conversions and the other one is for conversion value. For conversions, as you can see, you can set a target cost per acquisition. So say that we wanted to set this at $50, you could do that. Or you, if you had a lower uh, acquisition cost, you could go you know, 10 or whatever it may be. Or you could even leave it optional if you would like. For, for me personally, if you're running an e-commerce campaign, I have found the most success actually running a, instead of a conversion, a conversion value. This is if you have the dynamic revenue being pulled in from your conversion types and you can see the revenue from each of those, it will optimize to get you the most amount of sales for the lowest price. And uh, I have been actually running this without setting a, uh, a target return on ad spend. I've been letting the algorithm kind of run and uh, go with it. If you wanna have a little bit more control over it, you could, hit your t you could set your target ROAS. So let's say that your, your company needed to actually hit like at least a 2.5 uh, ROAS, you need to hit 250 ROAS there. And then this is going to, on this right-hand side, because this is a dummy account, unfortunately it's not showing me the amount of weekly conversions that I might be able to get. But if, this, if you're inside of a real account over in this right-hand side, it's going to show you the amount of conversions that you can get for uh, the, the estimated amount of conversions that you'll get based on the budget and the target ROAS that you have. So now we have our budget and our bidding set. We're going to hit next here. Then it's going to ask for the locations. We're going to keep it at the United States. Language, we're going to keep it at English. And then here, this is an important setting to realize what's going on here. So the final URL expansion. So what this is, is send traffic to the most relevant URLs on your site. This is kind of cool. So what Google does is it crawls your site and say that you are an e-commerce store. It then identifies the landing pages that are going to be best based on the product that is showing inside to the end consumer. So say that you were showing blue shoes on your ad. Uh, Google, Google would automatically send that user to a URL that has blue shoes um, that are showing in the actual product catalog. So this is a really powerful tool. Now, if you wanted to have a little bit more control, you could exclude URLs, say, oh, Google, I don't want you to send people to this um, page on your site. I have noticed, and sometimes it sends it to my like my contact page or to like a privacy policy page. There's been a few times where it's done that. So I would ex I recommend going through and excluding those pages that make absolutely no sense to send customers to. But besides that, it's good to give Google room to test different things and try out different URLs to see what's gonna get you the ultimately the highest conversion rate. Um, but here's where you can add those URLs. You can also add rules inside of here. So the URL contains and then add uh, ne basically negative URLs inside of there. Or if you only wanted to send traffic to an individual, a specific URL, you could do that. Now in testing this, I recommend not to do that. Uh, the, the, the 
performance max campaigns work better when there's more options and URLs that it can test as opposed to you just choosing one URL. But obviously I understand there are circumstances where you need to send it to that exact page for whatever it may be. So we're gonna keep this as is, send traffic to most relevant URLs on your site. Then we have here some more settings here where we can adjust the ad schedule, start and end dates, and then our campaign URL options as well. So we're gonna hit next. And then here is the fun part, and honestly, the most important part. Now, I will say, the as you can see here, we have our ad strength that is incomplete. As we go through and add assets in here, it's going to go from uh, average, good, better, and excellent, I think is what it is. You want to do everything in your power to get this little bar up to the excellent stage for Google. Um, now, because this is a dummy one, I don't know if we're gonna be able to do it for this account specifically, because I don't know if I have enough assets to run that, but we're gonna try. So you can name your asset group here, and as you can see, we're going to add our URL. So we're gonna do HTTPS, and then we are going to do We're just gonna send people to my blog inside of here. And as you can see, we have a lot of different options that we're gonna go through uh, uh, inside of this actual building the ad. So as I mentioned, or as we saw before here, building this ad, we are going to be uploading all of these different assets so that they can work together in tandem. We're gonna be uploading YouTube videos, display, camp, or display banners, Google search uh, headlines, discover, Gmail ads, and then maps all in one place. So as we come back over here to the actual ad, it's going to ask for up to 15 images to show. So we're gonna hit images here. Inside of this, you can, you're, you'll can you have your asset library, or you could scan your website directly. So if we wanted to scan this um, house to home DIY real quick, and then let's scan the uh, Instagram. We'll scan that real quick just to show you what this does. What it does is it goes through and scans all of your assets and finds pictures and images uh, for you. So just for the purpose of this video, we're gonna go through and, and grab some of these real quick. So as you can see here, we have this image and uh, what it does is it's going to ask you for different aspect ratios that you can go through and select. And, and this is a bad example, but I can't click through these ones because it's not big enough. But this middle one, we're going to select that ratio. But say that we had another image that was a different size. As you see here, this one's a better example. You can select the different Im images and crop the image to make sure that's showing what you need it to. And say that I didn't want to show that one, I could hit exit here or you could go through and add it as well. And then you just wanna go through and make sure that these look decent inside of all of the ads. So we're gonna say that, that looks fine. And then you can select these three. Now you could also go through and upload images if you wanted to just go through and drag images into your um, folder as well, which I would re recommend. And then we also have the, the in this right-hand corner is all of the assets that I have selected. So as you can see, I have four images. I recommend taking advantage of the full 15 images that Google it recommends that you go through and um, upload. So we're gonna try and do that real quick um, and, and we'll kind of speed through that. So we're gonna come back over here. And here we are now, we have 15 images selected. Obviously, the better the images, the better the performance you're gonna have. These are mostly just ripped uh, directly from uh, one of the blogs that I have. So nothing too crazy here, just mostly as an example to show you. So we're gonna hit save here. And then it's going to have our 15 images. And now, as you see, we have this little blue check mark that is really satisfying that we have completed our images. Now we need to go through and upload, upload a an, an, an logo. So I believe we have one right here. We're going to select this guy. Um, and as you see, it's kind of cut off there, not great. So we're gonna do that, crop it a little, not the best logo, but it will work. And then we're gonna grab this guy, same thing, maybe slightly different. And then we're going to select that ratio and then save there. And as you see, you can up, add up to five logos if you'd like. For me, I'm just going to add those two right there. And then next is the video portion. And as you can see, if you don't have videos for whatever reason, uh, Google will create videos basically automatically when possible. And a lot of the times that's pulling either from your website or from uh, from your, your images that you provided. But I do recommend providing videos when possible. So we're gonna go through here and we're just going to add a couple of um, videos from my YouTube channel. So we're gonna see if we can find any here. There we go, there's one. And uh, and obviously these are not meant to be ads. I don't recommend just grabbing any videos from your YouTube channel. I recommend actually creating having ads that are for um, specifically YouTube, but I'm just, like I said, building this out as an example. And as you can see here, you can either search for a specific YouTube or keyword channel, or I'm just gonna grab the URLs of a couple of videos that I have on one of my YouTube channels. 
So I just copied the URL here and then I pasted it and then that's gonna show up with the video there. So we got that one. Let's maybe grab, uh, you can add up to five videos inside of here. So we're gonna do that as well, just so that we can get that beautiful, excellent um, status inside of the ads here. So we're gonna grab that. There we go. And then we hit next. So now we have our selected assets here. We have our five different videos selected. We're going to hit save. And then now we are really starting to make some ground here because we have the images and videos all planned out. Last thing that we need to do is go through and add headlines and it asks for up to five headlines. And like I said, I recommend taking full advantage of all of the headlines inside of there. I thought I wasn't recording there for a minute. Uh, I recommend taking advantage of all of the different headlines inside of here. So we're gonna go through and bust these out real quick. So as you can see here, I just went through and added a few different headlines. These need to be 30 characters or less. I do recommend um, adding as many value props inside of here as you can. So I just did house to home DIY, electric fireplace reviews, tips for DIY beginners. And this is really qu quick and not um, anything crazy. Learn how to build cool stuff uh, inside of the headlines. Now we need to go through and add long headlines. And same thing, up to five. And I know that this can be kind of repetitive and be like, oh man, do I really want to go through and add all these? But I'm telling you, the more ammo that you give the Google algorithm to go through and test, the better your results are gonna be. So I recommend taking advantage of all of these slots and filling out every single headline, every single long headline, and every single description. So we're gonna cruise through this real quick and build these out. All right, as you can see now, we have four headlines and four long descriptions inside of here. We are currently at a good ad strength. Um, it's interesting, Google is telling me, get your ad to fit in more places. Add at least one headline that fits into 15 characters. Let's pretend that we just changed this to 15 characters here. And then all of a sudden, we are then now at the excellent stage inside of Google or uh, for our ad specifically, which is what you want. Now I would recommend, obviously, as I mentioned, go through and fill out the rest of these, but because this is just a, uh, a demo, we'll leave it as is. For the call to action, I do recommend keeping it automated. And then for the business name, obviously go through and add your business name. And there is our ad. So what you can do from here, and obviously this is kind of a wonky example because it's pulling just YouTube content and videos that I've created and from my blog. But obviously if you have a product or service, you're gonna be highlighting these things. So here's what the ads will look like themselves inside of YouTube. Here's what they could look like inside of Gmail. Here's what they could look like inside of search. Here's what they could look like inside of display, all these different ad types. And you can scroll through this way, by the way, if you wanted to see more of what they look like. And then here's what they could, would look like inside of Discover. Oh, and this is on mobile. You can also preview this on desktop as well to see what everything will look like and make sure it's up to the your standards that you're looking for. Now, after that is all done, the next thing to do is go through and add audience signals. Now, this is really important. And I would recommend if you are an e-commerce store and a lead generation company and you have a current customer list, I recommend uploading that so that Google has more signals to go off of. Obviously, as I mentioned, because this is a dummy account, we don't have that luxury here, but you wanna go through and add an audience signal. And basically what this does is it helps, it helps the algorithm learn faster on who your target customer is. So for this one, we're just gonna call this DIY um, people, <laughs> uh, people who are looking to do your self project, do it yourself projects. We're going to add a new segment or sorry, we want to, so you can, sorry, you can add a new segment yourself if you wanna go through and build your audiences, or you could go off of the current data that you have, or you can go off of interest and detailed demographics. We're gonna do that here. We're gonna search for home improvement. I think that's an in-market audience if I remember correctly. We're gonna wait for this to load, 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 so slow. And then here we go. So we have in-market uh, for home improvement, and uh, we got M, another home improvement. Uh, so all these different home renovation or other people that I'd want seeing these kind of things and that do-it-yourselfers, there we go, that's a great one for me. So I'm gonna add all of these different audience signals inside of Google. You could go through and add a lot of these or mix and match, you can add your demographics as well. But for this one, we're going to do interest and detailed demographics. Now, most of the time, if you're inside of an account that already has data, Google is going to recommend the, the audience that you should start with. And if it does recommend something to you, then I recommend you go with that as well. So now that we've added our audience signal, 
uh, Max will go beyond your selection to find new conversions based on your goal, which is what we want. We just want to give it a signal on who we want to target, but then it will expand and find the right people. So now that, now that that is done, we're going to hit next. And next is going to ask for the site link extensions. I'm going to do this real quick based on my, my navigation in this blog. We're going to go projects about me and then contact. So we're going to back over to the performance max campaign and do uh, blog. Okay, so now I went through and added a few site link, uh, site link extensions. I recommend you being more thoughtful about this. I just went through and add these real quick about me description. And then, then we're gonna hit save there. So now we have our site link extensions add. You can go through and add cloud extensions as well. Things like, you know, free shipping or your free estimates or, you know, all different uh, cloud extensions that you can do there. We're gonna hit save there. And then finally, there are more extensions that you could add as well, like a lead form extension, a structured snippet, a price extension, promotion extension, or location extension. Now that we have those out of the way, we're going to hit next. And then the final thing is to do is to just go through and publish this campaign. Once you hit that, your camp, your performance max campaign is now going to begin running or it will go into a review phase where Google will go through and review all the creative. And my experience, it usually launches within 10 to 12 hours, but I would give it wait at least 24 hours but before you can expect your ad to actually go through and run. That is everything I have for this video right here. Now, if you are interested in learning more about Google Ads, I do recommend checking out this video right here or this one. It will dive into other areas where you can start winning inside of Google Ads. If you are interested in learning more about performance max campaigns or how to then start scaling your Google max performance campaigns or optimizing them after they began running, I do recommend subscribing because I will be creating more content around this and going into more detail on the next stages after your campaign has been launched and how to make sure you know that it's winning or losing and as I mentioned, how to optimize. So I appreciate your time. If you did find value, of course, I gotta say, please hit the like button down below and also subscribe if this is your first time here and we'll see you in the next video.